tell young pastors this celebrate what you want to see more of amen celebrate what you want to see more of and I was thinking about this place Kingsland and I thought if if I was in this area folks this is where I'd go to church because I believe there's no other place anywhere near this place like this place this must be the place amen it must be the place and here's what I know this is what I know everything rises and falls on leadership and with Pastor Mike, First Lady, Miss Kelly, you have wonderful leaders. Wonderful leaders. And again, it's just my privilege. Now, now here's what I did. I had a message that I was going to preach and I sent the PowerPoint and I said, that's, that's what I'm going to share. And as I was coming down, the Lord just dealt with my heart and uh, I've written a book on the Holy Spirit what good is a book on the Holy Spirit if I'm not willing to obey the Holy Spirit what, what good is a book if I'm not sensitive to what God would want me to share so uh, I pray many times uh, Lord help me say the right stuff and nudge me when I've said enough amen so can we stand our feet tonight can we stand again? It's, it's my privilege to be at this, at this great church. Luke chapter 16, I want to call your attention to Luke 16 verse 19. And you said, Pastor Benny, we don't have anything to follow with you because they didn't know. You say, well, why didn't they know? Well, I really didn't know. Luke 16 verse 19 says this. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died and was buried. And then our last verse says, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. I want to talk to you for a little while tonight about some good things about hell. Some good things about hell. Let us pray. Lord, as we bow our heads and hearts in your presence, what an honor to be here at the harbor tonight with this precious pastor and his wife. But God, I pray tonight that you would hide us in the cross of Calvary. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Jesus, we adore you and we praise you. Speak to us and through us. Holy Spirit, go before us. And for all you do, we're going to praise you. For I pray this prayer with a grateful heart. For I pray this prayer in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. As I say, I want to talk to you tonight about some good things about hell. Somebody sent me this story years ago. It says a, a man left for vacation to Jamaica, just as the pastor has been on vacation, not to Jamaica, but he's been on a much-deserved sabbatical. But this man left for a vacation to Jamaica. His wife was on a business trip. She was planning to meet him there the next day. When he reached his hotel, he decided he'd send his wife a quick email message. Unable to find the scrap of paper on which he had written the email address, he did his best to type it from memory. Unfortunately, he missed one letter, and the note was directed instead to an elderly preacher's wife whose husband had passed away only a day before when the grieving widow checked the email she took one look at the monitor and let out a piercing scream and fell to the floor at that sound her family rushed into the room and saw this note on the screen dearest wife just got checked in Everything prepared for your arrival tomorrow. 
your loving husband. P.S. It sure is hot down here. <laughs> One little girl said to her mom, she said, Mom, I can't marry John. She said, why can't you marry John? He said, well, she said, I can't marry John because John's religion doesn't believe in hell. She said, marry him. In a short time, he will. <laughs> Vance Havner was a preacher from days gone by. And Vance Havner was noted to preach many times on this subject of hell. And one night after he preached on hell, one of the members said to him, Brother Havner, why don't you preach on the meek and lowly Jesus? Instead of preaching so much on hell, why don't you preach on the meek and lowly Jesus? And Dr. Havner said these words. He's the one who taught me about hell. He's the one who taught me about hell. Congregation, hell's mentioned a 162 times in the Bible. 70 times it was Jesus who talked about it. 162 times. But I want to remind you tonight, it wasn't Paul, it wasn't Timothy, it wasn't Peter who talked about it the most. It was Jesus who preached about it the most. I know we live in a culture today where we don't want to talk about it. But Jesus talked about it in Mark 9, 43. Jesus talked about it in Matthew 13, 50. Jesus talked about it in Matthew 8 and 12. Now let me make a statement. Let me make three quick statements, and then I'll get into the message. Statement number one, it's not the will of God for people to go to hell. It's not the will of God for people to go to hell. 2 Peter 3 and 9 says this, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as, mum, as some men count slackness. For he's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. I want you to know tonight, I've got good news. It's not the will of God for anybody to go to hell. Let me tell you something else. Hell was not prepared for people. You say, what are you saying, preacher? Hell was not prepared for people. Well, the Bible tells us in Matthew 25 and 41, it was prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was not prepared for people. Hey, I've got great news. Hell was not prepared for people, but heaven was. <laughs> because Jesus said in John 14, verses 1 through 3, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I just stopped by to tell you tonight. It's not the will of God for people to go to hell. Hell was not prepared for people. And I want to tell you something else. God does not send people to hell. God does not send people to hell. If a person goes to hell, they'll go as an intruder. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll disregard some things if you go to hell. You say, what are you talking about, pastor? I'll disregard some things. You'll disregard the will of God. You'll disregard the sacrifice of Jesus that he went to a cross. You'll disregard the Holy Spirit that deals with people's hearts, according to John 16 and 8. And you'll disregard the prayers and love of others. I love what C.S. Lewis said. C.S. Lewis said, there are only two kinds of people in the end. Those who say to God, thy will be done, and those to whom God says in the end, thy will be done. David Crockett said on one occasion, he said, if you have a bad thought, tell it to go to hell. Because that's where it came from. If you have a bad thought, tell it to go to hell. Because that's where it came from. But I want you to know tonight, there's some good things in hell. 
You say, preacher, I've never heard such. There's some good things in hell. You say, what are they? Let, let me give you four or five good things in hell. First of all, there are good people in hell. There are good people in hell. You know, the scripture says there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, wait, which was laid at his gate. Which was laid at his gate. Now, when I grew up, we were poor. I mean, it was oatmeal, cornmeal, miss a meal. We were poor. <laughs> Amen. We were so poor, we went to Kentucky Fried Chicken to lick somebody else's fingers. We were poor. <laughs> so what my mother would do when we were growing up, Halloween would come. And what mama would do, she would take us in a community, nice houses, not like we lived in. Because as I say, we were very poor. And I would walk up there with a paper sack, and I would be in a nice neighborhood, and I'd say, trick or treat. And I'd get some candy, because we didn't get it often. Now, I want you to understand something. This rich man... I'll give you something to think about. The Bible says there was a beggar by the name of Lazarus that laid at his gate. That tells me, Pastor, he was a pretty good man. He, he didn't call somebody and say, get this trash away from me. He, he, he didn't call somebody and say, I, I, I don't want this deplorable around me. He didn't call somebody and say, oh, oh, we're, we're, we're an astute, wealthy family. We, we don't want this person here. Apparently, he, he, he let him lay at the gate. I want you to see something, folks. He may have been a good man, but being a good man won't take you to heaven. Because all I've got to say, if being good will take you to heaven, how good do you have to be? See, ladies and gentlemen, there are people that are in hell tonight that are good people, but they never accepted Jesus Christ. You say, Pastor Benny, what's good in hell? I'll tell you what's good in hell. There are good people in hell that never took time to accept Jesus Christ as, as personal Savior. I'll tell you the second good thing in hell. Not only good people, but good vision in hell. You say, Pastor, what do you mean? Well, well, let's read verse 22 and verse 23. It says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Wait. A few years back, I, I had LASIK surgery. I was blind, and then I could see. So see, if, if you're talking while I'm preaching, I can see it. <laughs> if you're looking at that foam and you're texting hell, and I can see it. Because what happened? I was blind. But I, I, I got good vision. Let me tell you what's good in hell. Vision is good in hell. You say, preacher, how do you know that? Well, the Bible says there was a rich man in hell. And I want to remind you, folks, he didn't go to hell because he was rich. He went to hell because he was lost. There was a rich man, ladies and gentlemen. He was in hell. But he could see Lazarus in heaven. He, he, he literally could see Lazarus in in heaven. You say, wait, preacher. Can people in heaven see in hell? No. You say, how do you know that? Because Revelation 21 and 4 says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. 
And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Thank God. No, those in heaven can't see into hell. But how terrible. How terrible, ladies and gentlemen, to be in hell. And for all eternity, see your mate in heaven. For all eternity, young people. Be in heaven or be in hell and see somebody in heaven. How terrible to be in hell and see family members in heaven. What's good? What's good, preacher? What's good in hell? There's good people in hell. There's, there's, there's good vision in hell. I want you to know something else. There's good memories in hell. Preacher, what are you looking at? Well, look what the Bible says in verse 25. But Abraham said, son, remember that in thy lifetime thou receive of good things and likewise Lazarus of evil things, but now he's comforted and thou art tormented. Wait. The man that was in hell, he said, remember. So when a person goes to hell, they still remember. You say, Pastor, if you go to hell, if I go to hell, you'll remember this not. you remember there was a preacher came to the harbor. And he talked to us about hell. you remember that mom and dad tried to get me to go to church. you remember that my friend told me about Jesus. Somebody said, there's no good things in hell. Oh, there's good things in hell. There's good people in hell. There's good vision in hell. There's good memory in hell. I'll tell you something else. There's good evangelism in hell. What do you mean good evangelism? Look what verse 24 says. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he might dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. This this man that was in hell, he said, send Lazarus to my five brothers. I don't want him to come here. He had sores on his body. And the Bible says the dogs came. And they licked those sores. The dogs came. And they licked where the infection was. The dogs came. They licked where the bacteria was. There's not a bit of doubt in my mind. Listen to me, young people. There's not a bit of doubt in my mind, young lady. That he took that hand and he scratched those sores. And that rich man said, I don't care. I don't care where that hand's been. I don't care if that hand's been where the dogs licked. I don't care if that hand's been where the infection was. I don't care if that hand's been where the mucus rolled out of those sores. Have him take that hand and touch my tongue. Because I'm tormented in this flame. And send him to my five brothers. Send him to my five brothers. Because I don't want him to come to this place. Preacher, there's no good things in hell. Oh, yes, sir, yes. There's a lot of good things in hell. There's good people in hell. There's good vision in hell. There's good memories in hell. There's good evangelism. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, we ought to just be nobodies that's telling everybody about somebody that can change anybody, and that's Jesus Christ.
Not one time in the Word of God does it tell a lost person to come to church. Anybody tells you that, they're taking the Scripture out of context. Not one time does it tell a lost person to come to church. Never in that context, but over and over it says for us to go get them. It says to go get them. Go get them and bring them in. Let me tell you one other good thing about hell. There's good theology in hell. There's good theology in hell. See, I want you to understand something, folks. There are no unbelievers in hell. They're all believers now. There's good theology in hell. Preacher, where do you get that? Well, I I get it in verse 30. Look what he said. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Pastor, he knew why he went there. He didn't repent. He knew why he went there. He didn't repent. What does God want from us? He wants me to acknowledge my sin. And be so sorry for my sin that I want to change. That is repentance. Believe that he died for my sin. And confess them to him. Man does not go go to hell over what he does. He goes to hell over what he doesn't do. I have been pastor of my church, Rock Springs Church. I'm starting my 35th year on July the 1st. You say, preacher, how do you stay that long? When I wanted to leave, I just stayed. And when the people wanted me to leave, I just stayed. Church I pastored before that church was a church in Comont, Tennessee. I stayed there three years, and I left for health reasons. The deacons got sick of me. (laughs) Mike, when I pastored in Comont, Tennessee, I would do visitation at Erlanger Hospital in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The head of the cardiology department there, true story, and I close with this story. It was a man by the name of Dr. Maurice Rollins. He was an acclaimed doctor, President Eisenhower's doctor, a proclaimed cardiologist. I would see him many times as I walked the halls, but there was only one problem. Dr. Maurice Rollins was an atheist. He didn't believe in God. And he said one day, he had a 47-year-old mailman that was having heart problems. And he said, I was going to do an EKG on him. And he said, to be honest with you, I I was looking forward to, to meeting the guy. Because on his paperwork, He shared that he was an atheist too. So I was looking forward to us talking. He said, I was doing an EKG on the man. And while I was doing the EKG, I asked at this time, no one would move. While I was doing an EKG on the man, he said he dropped dead. He said, I had a nurse on each side of me. And one nurse started putting in an IV. And he said, the other nurse started putting a breathing bag on the man. And Dr. Maurice Rollins said, I was doing chest compressions on the man. I was pressing hard on the man's chest. And he said, I heard the man say these words. I'm in hell. I'm in hell. And he began to describe hell. He said, I'm in hell. Dr. Maurice Rollins said, I wanted to put a pacemaker in. And he said, 
I, I went down his collarbone vein. But he said, what I did, blood started shooting in every direction. And the man kept screaming, I'm in hell. I'm in pain. Dr. Maurice Rollins said, I said to the man, don't bother me with this hell business. I'm trying to save your life. And the man said, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. And Dr. Maurice Rollins said, the two nurses looked at me and said, pray for him. Pray for him. And he said, I said, Jesus, this man believes in you. Jesus, will you save him? This man believes in you. Will you save him? He said, when I said that, everything subsided. Everything stopped. Everything was calm. He was okay. Dr. Maurice Rollins said, that man, that day, became a believer. And he said, I did too. I preach, last Sunday I preached four times, but I always preach three. To the best of my ability, folks, I haven't never shared this message anywhere but my church to the best of my ability. But brother, I preached it one morning at 8 o'clock. Then I went into a little guest relations room. I just to be honest we I try to drink something for my throat. I mix vinegar and water for my throat. And I'm trying to drink something from my throat, and trying to get alone and just pray a little bit before the next service. <laughs> and they said, Pastor Benny, there's a man that says he's got to see you. I said, well, I'm, I'm trying to get ready for this next service. <laughs> they said, no, Preacher Benny, he's got to see you. I said, okay. Send him in. He said, Preacher Benny, do you remember me? I said, no. He said, I'm Richard Jenkins. You came to the hospital. I was very sick. Pastor Benny, you prayed over me. But he said, Pastor Benny, I went to hell. But I could hear you praying over me. Pastor Benny, I went to hell. But I could hear you praying over me. He said, Brother Benny. Please, when you go into that 930 service, when you go into that 11 o'clock service, tell them hell's real. Tell them hell's real, preacher Benny. I went there. You were praying over me, brother Benny. Tell them hell's real. Friend, Eternity's too long to be wrong. D.L. Moody said, 
Don't preach on hell unless you can do it with tears in your eyes. God, break her hearts. God, break her hearts. Because it's a real place. For one moment, every head's bowed and every eye's closed. Every head's bowed and every eye's closed. There's no one looking. There's no one moving. There's no one talking. Pastor, I'm here tonight. And I don't have the assurance that if I died, I'd go to heaven. But oh, preacher Benny, I don't want to go to this place that you've described tonight. I don't want to go to this place that you've described tonight. Pastor, I don't know that my heart's right with Christ. And Brother Benny, I just ask you tonight, would you pray for me? If you would like for me to pray for you, slip your hand up right now. God bless you. 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 Listen to me closely. I want you to take your hand down. If you raised your hand tonight, if you raised your hand tonight, repeat this prayer with me. Pray these words with me right where you're sitting, right where you're watching, if you're watching online, right where you're at tonight. Say these words in this room. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. But God, I'm so sorry for my sin. I'm so sorry I want to change. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. And I confess them to you right now. Thank you, God, for shedding your blood for my sin. <laughs> Thank you that you washed my sin away because of your blood. Thank you, God, for saving me tonight. Thank you, God, that I'm right with you because of Jesus Christ. Pastor, I prayed that prayer with you. If you prayed it with me, I'm standing. I want you simply to do what I'm doing. I simply want you to stand if you prayed that prayer with me. I'm standing, so you're just joining me. Stand all over this house. Stand all over this house. Stand all over this house. Thank you for joining us online today from wherever you're watching.